Hello, my name is Tete J. Kepsi Richie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Today, our discussion on partial differential equations will be on auxiliary conditions of partial differential equations. At times, when we solve our partial differential equations, some conditions will be given to us to find a particular solution to the general solution that we find. Those conditions given are known as auxiliary conditions. They, they can either be an initial condition or boundary condition. So we have two types of conditions in solving partial differential equations. Those conditions are initial conditions or boundary conditions. So before the video will end today, I will take you to what an initial condition means. The number of initial conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation. Then we'll talk about what a boundary condition means. The number of boundary conditions needed to solve a particular differential equation. And the types of boundary conditions that we have. This will be a very interesting discussion. So I indulge you to watch the video till the end. However, before we start things off, I want to introduce you to something. Now, if we have a dependent variable u and it's dependent on, let's say, x, t, and y. Okay, it's dependent on three variables. x, y, and let's say t is the time. t is the time. The t is the time variable. Okay, very, very necessary. Take notice of it. Time variable. Then the X and the Y are known as spatial variables. Spatial variables. So take notice of them. Very, very important. The T is the time variable and the X and the Y are known as spatial variables. Now, if we find partial differentiation with respect to X, that's U of X, okay? Of the X, T, and the Y. This partial differentiation will be known as spatial derivative. I hope you get that. It will be called spatial derivative. Why? Because the differentiation is done with respect to a spatial variable. So we we'll call that derivative a spatial derivative. Now if it's with respect to y, okay, is the same spatial derivative. Spatial derivative. So we'll take notice of it. When I say spatial derivative, you understand. Now, if it is with respect to t, that's x, t, y. That's with respect to time. We'll call that, the t is time variable. So, when we differentiate, we'll call it what? Time derivative. Time derivative. I, I, hope, I hope you get that. So, take notice of this thing very well. Let, we know what the time variable is, a spatial variable, what they are. Spatial derivative and time derivative. We'll be using it very often. So please take notice of it. So we start things off with the initial conditions. What do we mean by an initial condition to a partial differential equation? So we say that an initial condition a condition that specifies some properties of the function to be solved for at a particular time. Please, the time underline at a particular time. So, if a condition is given to a partial differential equation and that condition is subjected to time, then we say that condition is called an initial condition. For instance, if I have a function u that is dependent on x and t, okay, where x is a spatial variable and t is a time variable, okay, and the condition is given to me like this, x of uh, u of x comma zero that means the t is zero and it is equal to a function of x when this condition like this is given to me because the condition is subjected to time we say this is an initial condition or it can be u of t that is the differential of u with respect to t okay and x of zero or we are still using this uh, function and it is equal to 
the function of S. Then we said the condition is an initial condition. So if the condition is subjected to a time variable, then we said that the condition is an initial condition. We can rewrite this thing as the u over del t. You know that. And it's subjected to t equal to zero. And we have a function of x. Then we say that the condition is an initial condition. So just check the condition. If it is subjected to a time variable, then we say that condition is an initial condition. Now the next thing we we'll look at is that how do you determine the number of the initial condition needed to solve a particular partial differential equation? So we'll look at the number of initial conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation. Please from the beginning, we said that when the, the partial differential equation, the condition is subjected to time variable, then we call that an initial condition. Then if it is subjected to any other variable other than time, we call that variable spatial variable. So when it is subjected to that, it is not an initial condition. It is when it is subjected to time that is an initial condition. And we say that when we have a function dependent on several variables, including time, and we find the derivative, the partial differentiation with respect to time, then we call that derivative uh, time derivative. Then if it is subjected to other variable that is differentiated with respect to other spatial variables. We call that spatial derivative. I hope you are aware of that. Now, how do you determine the number of initial conditions needed to solve a particular PDE? The number of initial conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation is the order of the highest order time derivative. Please, highest order time derivative underline. So you just check the partial differential equation. Check the time derivative. Check the highest order time derivative. What is the order of that highest order time derivative? That will become the number of initial conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation. So, now let's look at these equations. They say determine the number of initial conditions needed to solve the following partial differential equations. So just check. So this is a time derivative. This is not a time derivative. This is a spatial derivative. And this is also a spatial derivative. Check only the time derivative when we are talking about initial condition. So when we check the time derivative, which one is the highest? So this is, is order one and this is order two. So the number of initial condition needed is the highest order time derivative. So we say the number of initial condition needed Initial conditions needed is 2. Why? Because the highest time derivative is of order 2. So the number of initial conditions needed is 2. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. Now let's check this one. We have a time derivative here. This is a partial derivative. This is also a time derivative. But this time derivative is of order 3. And this is order 1. So this is the highest order. So the number, the number of initial condition needed, the number of initial condition needed is the highest. So try. I hope you get that. I hope you get it. You can pause the video and see if you can find the number of initial condition needed for the third one. Now we check. Is there any time derivative here? We, we have a spatial derivative here, another spatial derivative. We don't have any time derivative. That means we don't need any initial condition to solve this partial differential equation. So we say that the partial differential equation, the partial differential equation okay, needs needs no time, no initial condition, no initial condition, sorry, no initial condition. 
So we, we don't need any initial condition to solve this partial differential equation. Or we need zero initial conditions to solve it. I, I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So now we'll go to boundary conditions. So we said that when the solution property for the function to be solved for is specified at time, as time, the time variable, then it is an initial condition. Now, what is the boundary condition? So the boundary condition is a condition that specifies the solution property of the function to be solved for at a particular spatial position other than time. Spatial position and the one. So now when the condition are subjected to any other variable other than time, then we call that condition a boundary condition. So for instance, I have a function U that is dependent on X and let's say T, where T is the time variable and X is a spatial variable. Okay? And the condition is specified like this. X of uh, U of S equal to zero, maybe T, and it is equal to G of T. When it is specified like this, then it is a boundary condition. I hope you get that because it is subjected to the to the spatial variable, not the time variable. So if it is a spatial variable, it's a boundary condition. If it is a time variable, then it is a what? An initial condition. We talk about that already. Or maybe the differentiation. So let's say del u over del s subjected to s equal to zero equal to maybe uh, a function of t. Then we call this a boundary condition. Or the combination of it. Maybe we have del u over del s subjected to s equal to zero maybe plus u of s equal to zero t okay equal to h of t so you see that everything here is subjected to a spatial variable so it is a boundary condition so we have three this or when we have the derivative or the combination of the two so on this note we have three types of boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are of three types. This, then the second one, then the third one. So we we'll look at the types of boundary conditions that we have. So the next thing we we'll talk about the types of boundary conditions that we have. So remember, when the condition is subjected to a spatial variable, then we call that condition a boundary condition. And when there is a, any derivative that is with respect to a spatial derivative, we call that derivative a spatial derivative. I hope, I hope you get that. So now we have three types of boundary conditions. They are one, Dirichlet boundary conditions, Newman boundary condition, and Rubin boundary condition. The Rubin boundary condition is also known as the Newton boundary condition. So you have three types of boundary condition. Dirichlet, Newman, and Rubin boundary conditions. Now, what is the Dirichlet boundary condition? And how do you determine the Dirichlet boundary condition? So that's the next thing we'll talk about. So let's look at the Dirichlet boundary conditions. It's a Dirichlet boundary condition, a condition that specifies some properties of the dependent variable to be solved for at a particular boundary. So when uh, conditions are given and that condition is subjected to a dependent variable, not any spatial derivative, then we call that condition a Dirichlet boundary condition. For instance, if I have a function U that is dependent on X and T, okay, and a condition is given like this, X of uh, u of s equal to 0 t and it is equal to a function of t we call this condition Dirichlet boundary condition because it's subjected to the whole the dependent variable or the function itself i hope you get that or a function that is dependent on x t and y okay and we have a condition given as s comma t y equal to zero okay 
equal to a function dependent on x and t this time around. This condition is called directly boundary condition because the condition is subjected to the dependent variable. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So anytime you have such situations, we call that condition a direct boundary condition. The next one is the Newman boundary condition. What is the Newman boundary condition? So the Newman boundary condition are condition that specifies some property of the spatial derivative of the dependent variable at the boundary. Spatial derivative underlined. So when the condition is given, the condition is subjected to a spatial derivative. Then we call that condition Newman boundary condition. For example, if you have a function u that is dependent on x and t, and the condition is given as del u over del x subjected to s equal to zero, we'll give you a function of g of t. We call this condition Newman boundary condition. Or we have a, con uh, a function u that is dependent on x, t, and y, where x are spatial variable, x and y are spatial variable. And t is a time variable. And we have del u over del y subjected to y equal to 0. And it gives you a function dependent on x and t. Then we call this condition Newman boundary condition. The next one is Ruben boundary condition. What is the Ruben boundary condition? When a condition is subjected to the dependent variable, we call that dihedral. Then when it is subjected to a spatial derivative, we call that Newman. Now the combination of the two, the uh, linear combination of the two, will be known as Ruben boundary condition. So we said Ruben boundary condition are condition that specifies some properties of the linear combination, linear combination of the spatial derivative. So spatial derivative for Newman. And the function itself, the function itself, the function itself is for Newman. So the spatial derivative is for Newman, and the function itself is for dihedral. The two put together will form the Ruben boundary condition. For instance, if we have a function u that is dependent on x and t, okay, and the condition is given like this, del u over del x. Subjected to s equal to zero plus maybe a constant k, then u x equal to zero, okay, t, and it is equal to a function of t. We call this condition Ruben boundary condition. Remember the Ruben boundary condition is also known as the Newton boundary condition. So when there is a linear combination of dihedral and Newman, that condition will be called Ruben boundary condition. I hope if any of the condition is given to you and you are asked to determine which kind of condition, boundary condition is that, you will be able to determine that. The next thing we we'll look at is how to determine the number of boundary conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation. So the next thing we we'll look at is the number of boundary conditions that will be needed to solve a particular partial differential equation. So we said the number of boundary conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation is the sum of the highest order of the partial derivatives. So you know that when we are talking about boundary conditions, spatial derivatives comes into mind. So we check the partial differential equation and check the spatial derivative. That's derivative that are dependent on special variable rather than time. When it is dependent on time, we say it is an initial condition. So when it is de dependent on special variables, check the, the number of special variables there. Check the highest derivative for the, for the number of special variables there and add them. That will become the number of boundary conditions needed to solve a particular partial differential equation. So I hope you get that. Now let's take it. Some of them, they say, determine the number of boundary conditions needed to solve the following partial differential equations. So, just look for 
the spatial derivatives. So this is a time derivative. We don't need that. This is a spatial derivative. What is the degree? Uh, what is the order? The order is one. And the variable, the spatial variable there is x. There is another spatial variable here, x. And the spatial derivative, the order is six. I hope you get that. The order is six. Now we have another spatial derivative, which is uh, another spatial variable, which is y. And a spatial derivative. So we have a spatial variable here, y. But which, which of these is highest? 8 is the highest. So the order is 8. So the order of the x, the, the variable x is 6, and that of y is 8. We we'll add the two, and that will become the number of boundary conditions needed to solve, a particular, uh, to solve this particular uh, partial differential equation. So the number of boundary, the number of uh, boundary conditions for this partial differential equation will be equal to 6, that's the highest partial derivative for the x. Then plus, the highest partial derivative for the y is 8. So that will be 14. So we need 14 boundary conditions to solve this partial differential equation. Now let's look at the second one. You can pause the video and try to see if you get a number of boundary conditions needed to solve this partial differential equation. Now let's look at it. This is a time derivative, so our attention will not be based on that when we are talking about boundary conditions. So this is a spatial derivative. Okay, we have only one spatial variable because this derivative is the same as this. So which one is the highest? The highest is two. This is one, so this is two. Then we can say that the number of boundary conditions needed to solve this partial differential equation is two. The number of boundary conditions is two. Now let's look at this one. So this is a time derivative. Our attention is not the spatial derivative, spatial derivative. So we have the highest here is two, and this is two. So we add them, and that will become the number of boundary conditions. The number of boundary conditions here will be two plus two, which is equal to four. I hope you get that. So we need four boundary conditions to solve this partial differential equation. Now let's come to this. Let's come to this one. So this is, we don't have any time derivative here. We have spatial derivative. What are the spatial variable x and y? So we have a spatial variable with respect to, a spatial derivative with respect to x here. And that spatial derivative with respect to x. Which one is the highest? This is the highest. So two. Then plus, this is the only spatial derivative with respect to y. So the, this is four. Sorry, this is four. So the, the order is 4. So we add the 2, that will be 6. So that means we need 6 boundary conditions to solve this, to solve this partial differential equation. I, I hope you get that. I hope it's not anything difficult. So remember, when we are talking about initial conditions, our attention will be on the variable t. The, the variable t. And when we are talking about boundary conditions, our attention should be on the spatial variables. There's other variables which are not with respect to time. There's other variables, let's say x, y, z, and not time, time variable. We'll end it here today. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Please bring your comments. Your comments keeps me going. So let your comments come, and that will make me to record a better video for you. Until we meet again on partial differential equation. Bye-bye.